welcome everyone welcome to to our conversation here already we we've gotten started so um good morning everyone or maybe good afternoon depending on where you guys are coming from we're here in i'm here in um, fountain hills arizona i'm actually just going to get us live on facebook so i can get this on our page um so i'm going to just click a button here really quickly so if you guys would um, would be so kind as to um, post in the chat what um, city, state, and your brokerage that you're coming with, even if you want to share with us how many years you've been in the business. I love seeing all of that. I love seeing where everyone is coming from. I love to travel, and um, travel scene is a, season is upon us, so I've been gone a little bit, but um, I'm back here for just another week or so. Um, there's Grace in North Carolina. I'm going to be in North Carolina next month, and Chicago and Utah I was there earlier this year. Oh, look at everyone coming in. So um, I have our friend here, Jeff Chalmers. Jeff is the um, founder and CEO of High Tech High Touch, um, and we are excited to um, be the sponsor of your event later on this month, right? Is it next week or the week September after? September 15th, one week. September 15th. Yes, yes. I will be, um, I will not be at that event because I'll be traveling elsewhere. I don't know exactly where I'll be, but I'll be somewhere around the country. Um, so we're excited to have you here, Jeff. And we're talking about building ships with service-centric technology. So we're going to be talking all about relationships and, and all the all the ships that exist in our lives. So Amen. we're excited for that. Um, I want to mention a couple of things here. So you guys most of you found the chat um, in the bottom of your screen. So if you wouldn't mind um, posting what city, state, your brokerage, and how many um, how many years you've been in the business, I'd love yeah. seeing that. And oh, um, that's wonderful. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, we got Crystal that's with us for she's been in the industry in the business for five months. So Crystal, hopefully oh. we um, we impart some wisdom on you. And there's my friend Nick. Hey Nick, um, in Chicago. Um, excited to, um, I'll be, I'll be spending time with him next, uh, later on this month too. So there's also a Q and a, um, section at the bottom of your screen where we have our fabulous moderator, Sarah, um, with us and she'll be, she's off camera. She's going to be answering your questions there. So please ask any questions that you have. Love that. Yeah. 46 years. I thought I saw 48 too. Oh, maybe that was 28, um, but 46. Whew. Um, that's a good one. Who's that? Ralph. Ralph. Wow. That's awesome. I want to talk to you, Ralph, because you probably have a lot to share with us. So um, fantastic. Um, so as I was saying, there's a Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. If you want to post any questions there that you have, you can also um, post them in the chat. Any comments that you have, we're happy to hear those. And then um, we are live on Facebook. So you guys can go back and watch the replay on Facebook on our Wise Agent page. We'll also if you've registered for this, so if you're watching on Facebook, um, if you've registered for this, you'll get a copy of it in your inbox um, after the recording is done. And um, and so that will happen as well. So we're going to get started because we're already four minutes in. Whew. Love it. All right. All right. You guys keep posting um, in the chat because I love seeing that stuff. And then Jeff and I are going to talk and we're going to talk ab about these building and maintaining relationships and how important it is in your business. So um, we've got people here from, you know, five months to 46 years, right? So um, Jeff, tell us a little bit about what your thoughts and feelings are on building relationships and how that's helped you in your business. Well, my business has been around for 30 years and that's the only way that I established my business was very yeah. simply by understanding the importance of relationships. Now look at we all understand that relationships are incredibly important, but what we don't understand is that we're all born salesmen, right? All of us. At some point in time, you put together a resume, you had a friend, you have family members. So when people sit there and say, well, I, you know, I'm not really a salesman. I don't really like sales. We're always selling ourselves, always. You know, at any point in time, you're selling yourself, whether you put a, together a resume or, or you've had some type of job interview, we are always in a position to, to want someone to like us, right? Yeah. So the relationship side is really simple. I always, I refer to building relationships as building ships, right? Because to me, relationships starts with friendships, right? Friendships turn into partnerships, partnerships turn into leadership, and leadership can create championships. So it's all ship-based, right? Yeah. So when I start talking to people about building ships, that's what I'm referring to. I'm talking about the fundamentals, right? The basic core values. Now, when you think of fundamentals, you really need to take consideration and really pay attention to the first three letters of that word. 
It's all about fun, right? Yeah. Fundamentals are all about fun. And if you can build a business where it's all about fun and it's building that core value into what you do in work and play, take into consideration what happens to your business. Now you've created raving fans. You've got free marketing, free leads. You're not buying any of this stuff because the people who you've serviced, who've done a great job with, they're the ones selling you. You don't need to sell yourself because our business, as much as we're called salespeople, we're not. It's about service, not about sales. Yeah. And, and I love what, um, you know, I, I love what you said there. And I think a couple of people are saying, Jeff, that your microphone is a little, maybe your volume is a little bit low. So if you can adjust it a little bit and while you're doing that, but I know, you know, the building of relationships is something that is so important in this industry because you want to have that repeat business. You don't want to sell the one property and then just be done with that client. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, I know knowing your numbers is I'm, I'm big about knowing my numbers. I, I tell everyone you got to know your numbers. And so your, what is your cost of client acquisition? And so what does it cost you, right? Either time or money or both, right? To acquire a new client. Yep. And then if, and I'm always about like, let's do things smarter, right? Like yep. we don't have to always be grinding out, just working so hard to like get that next thing. But if you're building the relationship, it is, I mean, you're just, you're getting paid to become friends with people. I mean, and how fabulous is that, right? I mean, you just get paid to have fun with people and, you know, get to know them. And, um, and then when that all happens kind of naturally and organic, most of the time, um, what happens is that that business comes back to you and then your, your client acquisition, the, that number comes down drastically because you're not out getting new business because the people that you've already acquired are coming back to you or referring other people to you. So it doesn't cost you any money. So depending on how you look at it, if you're a numbers person, you can look at it from that perspective. If that's, you know, you love crunching numbers um, or if you're just like, okay, well, how does this, you know, how does this help me grow my business? And if you are just meeting people um, I'm a chatterbox, as you guys have probably noticed, um, even this morning, I'm a chatterbox. When I'm sitting at line at Starbucks 90% of the time or wherever I'm sitting in line, I'm going to talk to somebody. I'm going to talk to the wait staff. I'm going to get to know them. I want to, I get to know people um, and why, and like our, our mutual friend, Jeff says, um, Sean Carpenter says, right, we're um, building relationships and, and solving problems and having fun doing it. That's what it's all about. Right. Really and so simple. look, and imagine the concept of you building a business, right? And wherever you go, people know you, but they don't know you as a salesperson. They know you as, let's say, an ambassador for that region or locality, right? What could be better than that? Then someone says, hey, look, it, I'm looking to buy a home or I'm looking to sell a home. And that person turns around and says, oh, you got to call Sean. Sean's the person you got to call in this area. He's the go to guy. That is the best piece of marketing you can have. But let me explain to you the really simple parts of this. It's, it's what I call the math of success, all right? So let's look at it this way. One plus one, right, equals two. It means when you work together, you get more. One minus one equals zero. Fighting against each other gets you nowhere. One divided by one is one. Same concept, right? One times one, again. The same concept comes down to this. What is it trying to prove? It's proving that when you work with people or for people, you will always benefit, always. And the worst thing that happens in our industry is when you have an agent or a salesperson that says, um, well, I didn't get the work from them. I didn't get the business because they didn't even know I was still in the business. Well, shame on you because that's what relationship building is about. When you sit there and talk with someone who's in real estate sales and they explain to you, well, I haven't spoken with them in six months or nine months or a year or in, at a number of events that I've been at when I ask the simple questions. Look at what do you do once a transaction closes? And they give yeah. you this blank stare. No, 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 no. I want you to think about this. If it's about relationships, you're following up to find a way that you can get in touch with this person, grab lunch, right? Coffee, something simple. But when they say, look at the transaction was done and I usually send them a card or a gift certificate or anything like that. Well, let me explain to you guys. When you buy a gift certificate, when that money and food is gone, so is your memory. 
So you have to make it something simple. Now, Sean, I know, loves to do cards, right? And mm -hmm. cards is something that's so simple and so important. Why don't most people just send out cards? I send out hundreds of cards a month. Yeah. And it's really simple to do. I utilize a service called Send Out Cards, right? Mm -hmm. Have the database there. They have a ton of different cards. I can send out cards that go with gifts. And it's all about getting that card. How do you feel when you get a card from someone, whether it's a handwritten card or just a card in general? Because people nowadays, they don't do that. Right. It's not about relationship building in that sense. It's about money. And if you've closed a transaction and you're only focused about what your goal was from the month, you're not doing things the right way. Yeah. And Diane said here, you know, I invited my buyer clients to stay with us at the beach this past weekend and we had a blast. I love that because again, you're, um, you're building that relationship. You're, you're forging that friendship, which will, they'll be out there. You're walking billboard, um, talking about you. And Jeff, you mentioned, um, you know, or, you know, place, uh, postcards and, and notes and whatnot. I want to just share my screen for those of you that, um, are kind of, you know, I always love doing these webinars, but I feel like, and I was telling Jeff the other day, I'm like, I want to be able to share my screen because I want you guys to take things away and say, oh, okay, I know exactly how to do this yep. um, within, within my CRM. So um, what, what I love about our tool is really you can do so many things so easily and so powerfully. Um, you can go ahead and just come into your contact list and select the group of people, right? So, you know, who do you want to who do you want to send a card out to? That to me is segmenting my audience, right? So I have, you know, I, I put people in categories. I want to, um, you know, make sure that I'm, I'm contacting them consistently. Maybe I, you know, have put them in a category called VIP, um, VIPs or whatever my category is, or maybe I'm ranking them and I have their status um, in here. Maybe they're my, my new hot leads that have come in for That's whatever perfect. reason. Maybe I'm acquiring one. Um, new ones or whatever the case may be a ranking. Uh, maybe I want to see all of my A ranks. And so I can search for these people and now I can say, okay, 31 people. And maybe I want to do a handwritten card and get some nice stationery. I'm all about nice stationery. And I love like the wax with the stamp on it. I'm, I'm all about those little details, right? Um, and if you're not into that, then what you can easily do is say, I'm going to send all these people a postcard. Okay, so what you can do is just come into our system and just click on postcards here, select your postcard, what kind of postcard do you want to um, send them, and you can just go ahead and create, upload your own image and whatnot, and then the system will um, type out everything that you type out what you want to send, it will print it, it will stamp it, it will mail it out for you, you don't have to bother with any of that stuff. Um, but if you're going to be, you know, doing a bunch of handwritten notes, you can come in here and just say, I'm going to just add a note. And now I can add a note to all of these contacts and say, sent handwritten card. And now I can attach this to every single person. Um, I don't want to say stamp, sent hand, handwritten um, card, right? So I can do that and I can just put this in here. And that is, that's it. The note goes into all of my clients and I'm good to go. Now I can go back and say, okay, well, um, when was the last time I did that handwritten note for, you know, John Bon Jovi? And I can go back and look and see in his, um, in his notes, the exact date I sent that, that last um, card. And look, at, and look at that part. I love, Alani, this, the bomb bomb aspect where you can just a quick, quick video. I mean, that's just a great, great tip. Yeah. 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 So sending out video, I think video is huge nowadays because, and that's why we're, we're doing, you know, it started, um, you know, even before COVID video was still a thing, but then after, you know, during COVID and even after um, video is a great way of people getting to know you. They can see you, they can see your face, they can see your smile, hear the inflection of your tone. And so you can go ahead and send out a video so if I go to Richard Branson, we've got some famous friends in this, um, in this account here, <laughs> right? So, so I can come in here and I can send him a bomb bomb video. I can, you know, we're partnered with Dub. So if you have a subscription to Dub or use their free version, you can use um, Dub to record a video. You can do all sorts of things. Or if you're just utilizing YouTube, I've, I've got a YouTube video queued up here. Um, you can come in here and copy this link. And I can send this out to, um, to Sir Richard Branson here. Um, I can say, okay, I want to send him an email. I can do it in a one-off message. Yep. Um, 
this is the most important thing too is you know so i can put in my message here i can type out a whole bunch of stuff and just paste in that video url and it will put in the thumbnail wow. super right? easy super easy and then put all this stuff in here so if i don't want to include all of this in here i don't have to right i can just send the video itself um, but what i can also do is leverage content um, that i've already written Right. I don't know about you, Jeff, but I can be um, I get tied up a lot of times at airports. There's a lot of delays at the airports. I just get tied up with work stuff, with family stuff. But I'm like, I don't have time to write the same email 10, 15 times over and over again. So I utilize our letters to be able to, you know, say, hey, I need to send um, send a message like, hey, did you change your address or whatever this this particular one that I chose here, right? And so I can just leverage the content that I've already written and saved and send it out in a in an email. And you're doing transaction after transaction. You find there's uniformity there, right? There's a mm -hmm. consistency there that people are doing it again and again. It could be a specific buyer, could be a specific community or even schools. And you're going to be coming across that. Why would you need to reinvent the wheel? Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. You don't have to. I mean, um, the one thing for me is um, in real estate, I, I feel like you guys do a lot of the same things over and over again, right? When you sell a single family home, this happens and that happens next. And then all these things happen. And being able to be set up in a system when you have a system like Wise Agent, where you put everything in, you put all of your content in. So then when you go through the whole process of listing, right? And so maybe their first time, you know, selling their property, they haven't sold a property in many years. And they don't remember the process and you can say, okay, well, we're going to order a lockbox and you can say, you can schedule, I'm going to share my screen again so I can show you guys how this, how easily this works. So you can go into your transactions and you can say, okay, I think, let's say it's, this is the, the seller. Okay. Well, I'm going to do, you know, whatever this is set or here is set up lockbox. Okay. I have to get this out on this date. Well, I can easily just come in here and say, send out this letter, just like I showed earlier, you click on the little email button, the message comes up and then here's the content, right? Well, to get that content in, it's just from our marketing dropdowns. And right now it's called letters. Pretty soon we're gonna be um, changing that name to content because we're gonna add more things and maybe I'll have a spoiler alert here in a minute. Oh, um, but you like can- already was a spoiler right there. I know, right? So, <laughs> um, so you can create a new letter and put in everything in here, right? Or if you go back to your sent emails, right? And copy and paste the one from the last time you sent to your, your seller talking about the lockbox, you can paste that in here. And now you can call this lockbox letter. And, and now there you go, you've set it up and you've, you've got your lockbox in here. So when you do go through that process again, you don't have to type out that whole entire message all over again. Maybe you put in some placeholders or some fill in the blank spots, but other than that, you don't, the majority of everything is done for you, saving you so much time, so much time. When you talk to the top 1% top of salespeople in any type of business, the one thing they're gonna tell you is, is the success they get is from consistency, doing the same thing, over and over again, day in and day out, right? This just makes it super, super efficient. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, and that's, so then you're efficient here in some of the tests that you have to do. So you have more time for the relationship building. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's the most important part of it. Yeah. So the more time that you save on the, I don't know, the paperwork, the administrative side of, of things, mm -hmm. the more time you have to invite your buyers or your sellers to the beach house and to drinks and for coffee and for lunches and to take them on those showings and to check in with them and make those phone calls, right? These Making jobs calls. that you want to try and master when you're doing yeah. anything in sales. And if you can master these two things, you'll have a business that's not only super productive, but super profitable. First and foremost, you want to be the rainmaker, right? And how do you become a rainmaker? You network. You get people to know who you are and what it is that you do. Secondly, you want to be someone who is that point person, right? The person that everyone's going to talk to no matter what type of business they're in. So those items are really, really important when it comes to creating any type of business, right? And just doing that consistently will create that business for you. 
the raving fan mentality, people still at this point in time don't understand it. But raving fan mentality is all about doing the right thing every single time, consistently, client after client after client, creating that network where people know who you are and you don't have the, oh, I didn't know you were still in the business. So you lost a sale simply because you didn't connect with them. And you can never say you're too busy because too busy are usually the people who are out of business. Right. Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to do do that. And the um, one of the things, you know, we talked about, you know, how to build these relationships is by making those phone calls and um, keeping in contact with them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen one more time. Sorry, I keep going back and forth, but I get so excited about this stuff, right? Um, and then Jeff, if you wouldn't mind when you're talking, if you can lift up your microphone from your um, headset. And Still get it low, huh? Oh, there you go. Is That's that surprising because I'm usually a pretty loud guy, so... Okay, let's see. Let's see if people are saying like that's better or not. But I, uh, I saw the last one. People say it was better because I okay. I, I just switched to a different mic. So okay, okay. Someone said that's better. So maybe that's holding cool. it up would be thanks, um, Jody. Great. Yeah. So um, so yeah, I think phone calls are definitely the thing to be doing, right? You definitely want to be um picking up the phone, calling people, um, but also texting. I mean, texting works. People want to, you know, people are busy in every industry and in everything that they do. And even if they're just, you know, um, whatever it is that they're doing, they're busy and text is an easy way of communication um, for, for, mo for most. And so if- Touch, right? No matter which way you're doing it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so being able to send out a text message to um, to a whole group of people by um, selecting, you know, selecting your contacts and then typing out your message here, putting in your message and then, you know, putting in placeholders. Yep. I was, I don't know about you. Whoops, I swiped too far. Um, I don't know about you, Jeff, but when I get a text and it always says like, hi, first name, you know, I always feel like, oh, okay, so is this a real message or is this a canned message? Yep. I always say, you know what, put in your message and then write their name in the middle of the sentence. So put, you know, put something in here and then say, um, do you think this would work for you? You know, and then first name, yep. question mark. That way it doesn't feel as canned and it's, you know, cause the name is like after the salutation technically, but it, and it is going to be a placeholder, but it doesn't matter. It just looks a little bit more natural, I think. But it's a real approach because when you and I have a discussion, yeah. I don't mention your name first. I mention your name at the end or in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think, so I think that just like simple little things. And then of course, attaching a video or an image, um, you know, to, to your text messages are really important as well. Um, so, you know, going, going and just saying, okay, I'm going to attach something and you can attach um, an image from here, uh, um, just a video that you've already attached from somewhere else or um, whatever it is. So if I want to attach this image, I can go ahead and say like, do you think this property, you know, would work for you? Um, and so then I can just send this and then just a call to action. So it's really important to give your clients, right? Give your, um, your audience that next step of what they need to do. Um, so do you think this would work for you? Um, that's good. And then just say, if so, you know, call me or whatever text back for showing, right? Real simple, real short, real to the point. And like you said, adding those key things like the picture or video, all it does is just, it just adds some personality to it. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, those are, those are some things that you can, that all of us can do really simply and really easily. And these are all kind of on the fly or um, kind of just, you know, sporadic texts or emails that you're sending, um, which is great, you know, and you want to be kind of sporadic and everything, but sometimes we need to plan in life. Um, I'm a big planner. I, I plan a lot of things. And so for me, um, using the marketing, the drip campaigns and the programs that we have, um, you can use one of the programs that we are already created for you and then kind of semi-customize awesome. those, right? Um, and I love that we have them in two languages. I'm bilingual. And so having them I'm English and Greek, but um, we don't have them translated in Greek, but um, that would not yeah. be me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't be able, I mean, I'm fluent, but um, that's the Greek spelling is like insane. It is really hard to spell in Greek. Um, that would have to be somebody other than me. Um, but yeah, we do have them in English and in Spanish. 
um, but you can create your own custom one as well. That's great. So if you know, um, you know, you're promoting an open house or you're, you're promoting some event that you're going to be hosting, um, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, it would really, it really serves you well to send out those reminders like, hey, we'll see you in an hour, um, you know, bring your family, bring your friends. We've got coffee and donuts at the open house today. Come join us, right? And being able to, um, to do that easily um, and planned out um, is something that's a huge time saver, again, so then you can still build those relationships. And don't overthink it. There are a lot of people who think that marketing is complex. It's not. People is simple. Don't focus on profit. Focus on people. Mm -hmm. That's simple. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I think, um, you know, when you, when you put yourself out there to serve, um, that serves you, that serves you best in the long run. Um, and even if someone doesn't buy or sell with you, I always feel like, you know, people ask me all the time, oh, should I, you know, how many people should I have in my, my database? Should I delete people that, you know, you know, listed with somebody else or bought through somebody else? And I'm like, no, because you don't know what that experience was like. I mean, I don't delete anyone from my database. Everyone stays in here. I put notes. So then I know they listed with so-and-so. This didn't work out. And then I try and figure out, well, why did they go with somebody else? So why did they list with that other person? Right. What happened? What, what was it about me? Oh, I look back on my text messages. And every time they texted me, I said, hey, I'm too busy right now. I'll call you back in a little bit. They wanted more of my time. Yeah. Just look at, you should be looking for two things. One, first and foremost, who are the people in your database that are really getting you business, are referring you business? Those are your top level people, right? Secondly, when do you remove somebody from your database? How about when they ask? Yeah. That's it. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. Provide them the information. You never want to be in a position as a salesperson where someone says, oh, I didn't know you were still selling. Well, yeah. the reason that no one knows that is because you haven't kept in touch with them. Yeah. Well, are you talking about unsubscribing? So even unsubscribe people, I still, um, I still keep them in my, my database. I would just put, you know, put them in the category of unsubscribe. So then I don't, and if you're using, you know, when you're using wise agent and you're sending out your emails, we handle all of that for you. The unsubscribes and the, the stops to the text messages, we handle that for you. Um, but if you're using, you know, like your, your Google apps account or your outlook or whatever to send out emails, I would just go back into your wise agent account and, and put them in a category called unsubscribed or remove their email address and put it somewhere else. So then you could say, okay, well, they might not want my marketing messages, you know, my drip campaigns or my monthly newsletters or whatever it is, but maybe they want to get, you know, something, a one-off email from me every now and again. And I think, when you do send those one-off emails, just saying, hey, Jeff, just checking in to see how you and the boys are doing. That's it. Like, that I don't really know anyone that would unsubscribe to that. <laughs> the, the marketing emails that you have have to be planned. You have to have a target towards them. And the content you guys have created is amazing, but it, it's the same concept. Look at you're not going to be sending out just real estate related things to people. Because the first and foremost, not everyone needs at this point in time or any other point in time to buy or sell a house. Maybe they just bought, maybe they just sold. So how about providing information that's relevant to them in their locality so that, look, it could be events that are happening. If you send something out to a group of people and say you've got that database so well defined that that specific maybe school district or town or region or neighborhood that you're shooting stuff out and it has to do with things happening in that area, events that are happening, you're never gonna be removed from that database because mm -hmm. those people, they wanna know what's going on because you're the key person in that locality. You're the, you know, that local or hyper-local um, professional that they go to. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, I know brokers that are doing that in, um, in a lot of um, different areas because that is something, if you're in an area like, we, I live in a small town, Fountain Hills is a really small town, um, but we have a lot of things that are happening, right? Like in the, I think next weekend, uh, next week, Friday is a homecoming day parade. So, so there's homecoming parade that's happening at the high school. That's something like, you know, you, if you know that your clients have kids in the school district, you're going to send them an email saying, Hey, this is what's happening in the town. 
um, you know, maybe they're, you know, maybe they're, they don't have kids in, in the school district, maybe they're younger. So talk about what's happening in Scottsdale and in Old Town and the nightlife, or if they're um, senior citizens, talk about the senior citizen services that are, you know, in your neighborhood that are being offered by the community centers and whatnot. So um, there's things that you can do. You're the resource for a lot of people on deciding where they're going to live. And some of those services, like the schools, the services that the town provides, the nightlife and the, um, the, the um, you know, the restaurants, the, everything that's happening, the events that are happening, that's what draws them to that area. And so when you become the expert, yep. right? I always tell people it really comes down to perspective. Look, at if you're having a discussion with someone, person to person, and all you're doing is talking about real estate, that person's got to turn around and walk away. But if you're talking about local events or, hey, what have you done? I understand your kids were in school and I understand they're playing sports. How you, how you have a discussion face to face is how you market in email and texting and otherwise. Yeah, yeah. But then, and, and I think that that's so true. Like, and then putting that information in your database to know, like this, you know, they their interests are gardening and their interests are swimming and you know going out in nightlife and they love to eat out and they do this. So then you can kind of um, you can consolidate your group, right? It's a, it might be a smaller pool of people um, that you're sending out an email. Maybe you're sending out five emails to five different groups, and that's okay to do as as you know, and then in addition to the one off, you know, just random phone call saying, hey, how's it going? Just wanted to check in with you. Yep. Um, are you going to be at the homecoming parade? Because um, I'll be there and, you know, whatever. It's, it's just it's really simple stuff. None of the stuff that we do is rocket science. It's really not. It's mm -hmm. just about touching base with people. Look at nobody wants to be sold to, but they do want to be talked to. So mm -hmm. you just make it about them and not about you. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and, um, I, I think that is such a, such a great, great thing to, to kind of note is that it isn't that difficult. It isn't, um, it doesn't have to be so like planned and so, um, you know, elaborate to just reach out to somebody, um, with a phone call or, um, or whatever it is, if you're listening to them and you're taking your notes and you're grouping them, right. I see my friend Nick is posting about, um, you know, a demo on, on wise agent text features. I love what Nick is doing on his YouTube channel. Right. Um, and th the thing is, and Nick is, is a great broker in Chicago and a, and a dear friend of mine. Um, because what, what happens Very is nice when you love that. Yes. And so what you do is, you know, you really find out and you really become integrated in your client's life. Um, and I, you know, look what Nick is doing. It, yeah. It's all about content. Nick mm -hmm. is not asking for anything. He's providing information. The idea, so this gives an idea of the success of a person. The idea that he would post that to say, hey, anyone want any help to learn this? Says volumes about the person as a salesperson. He's not selling, he's servicing. He's not saying, I want something in return. He's saying, here, if you guys need help, I'm happy to help. And guess what happens when you end up helping someone again and again and again? They say, hey, what is it you do again? And now the wall is down and it's not about sales, it's about service. And it is free marketing just by being kind. It is. Yeah. And well, Nick is, a, he's a good person. He's a, he's a kind person. Um, job, yes. Yes. Um, so, you know, it really does. I saw in a, in a Facebook group, somebody had posted like, oh, I was, you know, I've been in the business for a year and I was about to give up. And, you know, some of the, you know, agents I was dealing with were, um, you know, we're just not really kind to me. Anytime a buyer would come through, they wouldn't give feedback or whatever it was. And she said this one person just, you know, she was ready to give up in the industry and said a broker came in and was like, oh, well, let me give you the feedback and was really just honest and was like, hey, if you did this, or if you had your clients do that, then I think this would sell, or if you did whatever. And she was like, you know what? I started talking to this person and it just made a world of difference. And now she stayed through the, still in the industry, right? This happened about a year ago or so. Because it really does make a difference when you make a difference in somebody else's life. Um, and that can be from agent to agent, right? But also um, agent to client too. Um, you, you can definitely change somebody's life and outlook on it. Um, 
you know so i'm still waiting for the the car sales people to to change their way of doing business <laughs> oh it is scary it really is and that right change. it's too bad but look at in any type of business you're going to find that special one percent the people who are really good but in in like talking about the auto sales business I bet everybody knows one or two people who are really, really good at that car salesman. And I'm, I'm not talking selling, I'm talking service. People that you know, oh, you gotta go call John. John is a trustworthy guy, you can trust him. He's the guy to go to, he's gonna give you all the information, it's completely transparent. You just said all the right things, right? Yeah. But that's what you wanna be. It, look, at people invest in people who invest in them, right? And how do you invest in them? Time. That's yeah. the most important thing we all have is time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what Nick's doing. I mean, if you guys are reaching out to Nick, you know, he's going to invest time in you to show you how to do this wise, the wise text feature. Um, so then you can go ahead and, and, you know, run your business, um, you know, in an automated way. And that's, I mean, that just really helps everyone out. So um, really this, efficiency yeah. creates proficiency creates efficiency. Yeah. So if yeah. you've got a great tech program, right. You've got a great CRM that allows you to do everything that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis and you're able to do it easier with less time. That's proficiency and proficiency ultimately comes down to productivity, which creates profitability. Yeah. So there's a few questions that um, had been asked of us, um, Jeff, to kind of talk about um, people are saying, you know, they're buying leads from different portals and whatnot. And how do they, um, how do they quickly respond to them without having to drop everything? So I wanted to share my screen and kind of address this because it is an important thing. And this can be used, utilized, our lead rules can be utilized, um, you know, for any of the portals that you might be, you know, um, buying leads from, but they can also be utilized in conjunction with our landing pages. Um, so um, landing pages are so important. Yeah, Most people don't even use them in there. And you guys are one of the few CRMs that leverages it in such a great way. And it's uh -huh. important to have that because it's a great lead source. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, leveraging your landing pages, and we have a, a ton of templates in here for you, um, from lead magnets to different open houses and, um, you know, home valuations. This is a really, um, this has been our hottest, um, you know, landing page utilized um, to date, because people want to know what their home is worth, right? I mean, that's just, that's just um, and so what you do is you get um, so let's say you post this out there on Facebook, um, you know, home valuation, and we, we, you know, make it really easy for you to do that. I think I have one in here. Um, open house, single property. Okay, maybe not, but whatever it is. So here's like a walk-in lead. If I activate it, I can just click here and click on um, Facebook and I can share it and I can share it to my story or whatnot. Yeah. And I'll say, I'll post it to my feed and I'll open up here and refresh this Facebook. Hopefully it doesn't log me out. And um, so here it is. So just now, right? So I went to, here's my um, my Facebook. And so it just, here's a, a walk-in a walk -in lead and I, you know, whatever this form is and I can fill it out. But then what happens once the form is filled out is that's the stuff that you want to automate, right? You're spending money, you're spending time, um, your resources, right? Your creativity on creating these landing pages. So after they click on submit now, what happens next? Yep. And that's a really important part of it. Um, and so what happens next, let's say it's, um, you know, this is for a Facebook ad. Next, I wanna categorize them. Maybe I wanna add them to my monthly newsletter um, category. So I remember to send them um, my newsletter, right? Um, I could add them to a drip campaign so I can put them on a, a campaign. So then that goes out automatically. I want to add them to my call list. So when I'm um, back in front of my computer or at my desk and I'm like, okay, what do I need to work on? Right. I've got my call list and they're on my call list. Um, but then I also get a text and an email. So then I know that the lead came in and the second the lead comes in, and even if I'm not sitting in front of my computer, it comes into my phone and now I can get the lead information too, because that's really important. Not that I just like, oh, you just got a new lead. Well, that doesn't do me any good. Um, you want to make sure that you get that contact information with a click of a button. You can call that person right away. Um, but then what if you can't call them right away because you're in the middle of something else? You can respond to them automatically through email, right? Or through a text message, 
right? People so you just, can... They just want to have some form of discussion, some contact. Not getting back to them right away, especially in a market like this where it is so changing, people just, it, now it comes down to speed. There are a lot more companies out there that are selling leads and you got to be the first one to that lead. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you have to, um, you, you definitely want to be, um, you know, the first one talking to them. Um, typically that can, you know, that person converts a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So you want to be the one, um, you know, putting yourself out there and sending that those lead automations, but then also, um, there can be, there can be more substance in your emails. Like these are just kind of like our, whatever, I don't know, whatever, someone wrote in here, but you can add your YouTube videos. You can add an image. Um, you can definitely have more things in here, um, or you can keep it just really simple and just say, Hey, can you talk right now? Or when can you talk or put in your Calendly link and say, Hey, pick a time so we can chat. Perfect. And that's right. what people want. People want to have action, right? So you get an email and then there's no call to action with it. Well, you're losing that lead as quickly as you got to them. People want to say, you know, when are you available? And the worst thing you want to do is get involved with this email tennis back and forth. So adding, adding something like a Calendly, which is ultra simple, and mm -hmm. or Once Hub. There's a ton of different products that are used, and they're part of our our a group of partners, just like Wise Agent. These are these are service providers who are just top notch. These are yeah. people who are great with support, great with products and services, and their executive team is all about making sure that people are taken care of. Yeah. Um, you can utilize, if you guys are getting um, a ton of leads, if you're getting in so many leads and you're like, gosh, I don't know if I can, you know, if I have time to, um, to talk to every single one of them and see if they're even, you know, possibility to, to convert. Um, what you can do is start them on the AI bot and you can either start them on the AI bot from the second they come in. Or if you're like, gosh, I've got some of these leads that have come in and I never used the lead rules from Wise Agent for some reason. Um, and then you find those leads and now you can add them to the AI bot if you know, okay, well, they were, you know, these came in as buyer or seller leads and now you can set it up and the bot will have a text conversation with these, That's these right. leads to try and now they're not going to convert them. They're not going to sell in their house or, you know, have buy a house through, through the um, texting, but what it does is it qualifies them, right? Are they ready for you to talk to them, for you to take time out of your day? Um, and start a building relationship with them. Um, and that's really powerful right there. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and so there's some questions on, you know, can you connect your social media accounts? Um, and so I know, I know Sarah, Sarah responded to that, but I think um, I did want to kind of address that is that your social media should be connected um, on your, um, your email signature. You should definitely have, um, you know, your, your social icons in here. Um, we've, recently updated this so you can come in here and say okay put your twitter if you're not a tweeter then remove this one or whatever it is super simple these are all discussions yeah. look at you could have someone who talks several different languages and in business nowadays those different languages are social platforms right so everyone has a different platform that's their favorite it's no longer just Facebook. There are some people that's all they want to do is talk on Twitter. Others that they're really involved on Instagram then you've got people who've got amazing you know TikTok. It's, it really comes down to what are you most comfortable dealing with? And that's the discussion that you have with people and make sure it's available for them to have, to, to look up, you know, more about you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely getting, getting yourself out there on social or, um, will help you. Um, but then some people are not like that. That's like not my cup of tea. I'm not really big on, on social posts, except for this morning. We had a beautiful sun sunrise this morning um, that I posted in my stories. But, um, you know, I you can pick up the phone if you're not that person that to, that's social, then that's when the texting, that's when the, the phone calls, the emails, that personal relationships, the coffees, like inviting people to coffee or for a drink, right? whatever it is let's just let's just ask that question because that's an excellent comment you just made some yeah. people who just aren't that social well you're in sales so you are social whether or not you accept it or not but there are different ways that you socialize like one of the big things that came down to play over the last several years is when the millennial talk right well you know millennials they're really not that engaged with people you know they're really everything is social and they text each other that's comical they are just as communicative as any other group, any other era. 
They just do it differently because of how they grew up and how their parents grew up and what was happening at their time. So become social. If you just pick a platform that you're comfortable with, try them all. Look at you don't need to have you know a ton of different followers. Like I look at LinkedIn to me is an important platform, right? So I have about eighteen thousand followers on LinkedIn. That to me is important because it's a professional platform, right? I want people to know about me, what it is I do, and when it comes down to reviews, which are vitally important for your business, to me, what's the best platform to have those reviews on? Well, if you have it on LinkedIn, they can click and basically look at the person who wrote the review for you versus mm -hmm. some of the other platforms, you know, the Zillows of the world, so to speak, where they look at and it's user 6785, who the heck is that, you know? So it just makes it easier. Just find out what is, what's comfortable for you. Jump yeah. on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, find what's most comfortable for you and just keep using it. Video is a perfect example. People are like, well, I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I sound. None of us do. Trust me, getting used to it is just getting used to being comfortable with yourself. And if you're in sales, you have to find a way to be comfortable with yourself. Look at grin and bear it. You don't look as bad or sound as bad as you think. Trust me, right now, I'm like, Jeff, man, you could have done something with that haircut. But let me tell you something. You got to try. You really do. And it does, it, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Someone says no or they don't like it, and you try it again. I've met people who are amazing at this stuff, but if you watch the first couple of videos they created, you never would have thought it was the same person. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I agree with that is just, you know, kind of get over yourself and, and, um, Absolutely. you know, yeah. Um, so we have a great question here from Cindy. Um, she's asking, I need to provide my seller with a weekly report. I would like to highlight my marketing efforts and stats. Do you have any suggestions on supplying this content to the seller? Thanks. So, um, thank you, Cindy, for that question. Cause I think that's a really, um, good topic to kind of cover here. Um, and I don't know if I've, I've talked about this before. But I would say running your reports. So if you're doing your marketing efforts, right, let's say you're selling 123 Main Street and you've sent out an email to your sphere on, um, you know, hey, come to the open house or um, whatever it is, whatever your emails are, or, you know, see my new listing or your text messages or whatnot. One of the things. You can, um, run the report from um, our drop down here and you can, you know, just come to. Your total monthly emails, and this is a new month, so I have to go back a little bit. And then you can, you know, run this report and you can search for it by your subject line, right? So I can just say 123 Main Street, and I don't know if I have anything with that subject line in there, but you can just say, you know, this is the subject line. And now you don't have to say, you know, I did, you know, I, I reached out to however many, you know, I sent out 125 emails, but what you can do is you can just, I um, mean, you have to give her the whole list, like I sent it to John Smith and everything else. Mm -hmm. But you can say, I sent out this email to 125 people, um, you know, 15 of them opened the email more than five times. And you can you can run through this and say, and I contacted this person. So um, and then not only just to report that, but then also to know, oh, well, Michael Phelps opened this email 14 times about, you know, coming to my open house or this new listing. I'm going to call him first to see what he was really um, interested in, because if we're interested in something, we're going to read it over and over and over again. If we're not interested, we're going to say delete or archive or unsubscribe or stop or whatever, and then never look at it again. Right. We don't go back and reread our junk mail. Um, that doesn't happen. Right. So um, you can you can definitely do that. You can talk. Um, so and that would be something that you could create in your letters content. You create a new letter and I would just, you know, um, I don't know if I have enough time to put it all in here and make it look pretty, but you would write out some things and then I would insert a table here and put in, you know, a few tables and say number of emails, um, you know, number of opens, so on and so forth. And I would put this all in here and I would say this, this would be my template. So then, and obviously I would make it a lot prettier than this and add more wordings, but I would put this in here. So then the next um, seller that I have, I can do this or the next week that I have to send this report to my seller, I could come in and just change out the number of emails and the number of opens and uh, text messages and everything else and showings and whatnot. 
So that's something that you can definitely do from within here. Um, but Cindy, you can contact our support and we can go through it just so you can see um, how this would be done in a prettier format. I just don't have time for it in this in this demo. Um, so is that is this being uploaded to the library? So yes, yeah, so this would be, so once I change this and let's say I just call this like seller, um, seller report, right? Um, and I can put in, you know, address, because I like placeholders, um, seller report. So I know that I'm going to put then, um, you might have people selling more than one property at a time. Um, and I can put this in the group for reports. And now I can save this. And now this becomes part of my, um, my library of letters, right? Excellent. So now I can come in here and I can, um, you know, edit this, or I can just come in, copy and paste it and make a new one for, um, for the next week. Right. So then I can make, you know, week two report. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, is the video on the website? Oh, is this being um this video? Sorry, Sharon, I didn't understand your question. Um, so yeah, this will be on YouTube. This video will live forever on YouTube, and um, you're gonna get it in your inbox app at the end of this recording. So um, sorry, I didn't understand you there. But now you know how you would use the template and then make a second letter. So there you go. So now I would just say week two um, of your report, and then save that. I can't spell when I'm on video. There you go. So, um, so there you go. But yeah, that's how that would work. And I think that would be a great way of um, being able to send a report. And I think that is, um, that's a great point that Cindy is making because you want to communicate with your sellers. I mean, you already have that listing. That is, you're in the thick of it with them. You want to make sure that you're communicating with them. You don't want them to be sitting there like, uh, is someone looking at my house? Are they interested? Do they hate it? Do they hate my curtains? Does my house smell weird? What's happening here? Why is it not, you know, why is my realtor not calling me? What's going on? Don't leave people guessing, um, right? And Jeff, I, I'm not sure about you, but I know for me, that's my biggest pet peeve when I like ask for some feedback and I get crickets, you know, and I'm just like, oh, so it's that terrible, huh? Yeah. And you right? can have those discussions. Look, at, it, it's okay to very nicely poke. When I say poke, look, at you ask that basic question and you're hoping someone's going to respond and they don't. So key it in a different way. Ask it in a different light, something that might be a little bit more playful. And then maybe they give you, you know, just templated response, well, then dig into it, you know, make it fun so that it makes a person who want to really, and you're like, you know what, if, you know, at home, to be honest with you, I have much different curtains in this. These curtains are beautiful. The ones I have at home are horrible. All of a sudden, this discussion comes about to be like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just went through a house. Now, all of a sudden, you've opened dialogue, right? Now, that wall's starting to come down. And that's the toughest thing that we have as salespeople is to try and get that wall down, right? Like and trust. Right. Just be a human being. Really simple. Yeah. Everybody, we're all struggling with something, right? Yeah. And you're, if you're asking for a simple response on something, why don't you just come down to their level? Maybe yeah. you can find, you know, a mutual understanding. Yeah. And then, and if it if it involves like sending, you know, like Cindy was brave enough to to comment on um, on the chat here. Um, if it involves, you know, your your CRM, if it involves Wise Agent, contact our support. We are here to help you. Our support staff is fantabulous. They do a great job, and they're twenty four seven, so they can. And I know um, my friend Nick can attest to this they, that they're twenty four seven because he's he's up late at nights um, uh, talking to them. But um, you know, just use the support because what happens is they'll teach you something that you might not have known how to use the tool and utilizing the tool is going to be really important in how you can leverage it towards you know the benefit of your business and making sure that you're um, you're doing things like having a library of content so then you're not reinventing the wheel every single day and you have that time so um so definitely um i know there's a, a few more questions in here um, I think Sarah just answered it about connecting the landing page to social media. Um, and I'll go, um, yeah, I think that is such a important thing. I want to show that again, because um, the landing pages are really powerful and for you to, um, to, to grow your business and it can be done organically. So these can be leveraged um, in conjunction with our digital ads. Um, so you can run, you know, Facebook and Google ads from our platform. Um, and so that would just be from the drop down marketing and digital ads, 
or you can just use them um, for organic reach, right? For organic leads. Their support is epic. Well, it's nothing yeah. better than hearing from someone who actually is a, an actual subscriber who's used it and loves it. Yes, yes. Thank you, Nick. That's Raven um, fan right there. Yeah, um, I, I love and adore Nick, and, and I think he knows that too. So thank you, Nick, for that. But yeah, so the um, so sharing on Facebook, we've made it really easy where it's just a single click. Um, and what you guys don't see when I click, because it does open up a new window, is it just will ask me, do I want to share? Um, and let me see if I can share this. So it'll it'll bring me to this page, right? So this is not my Facebook account. It's Rachel Green. So I can share it to my business page. I can share it to a group that I belong to. Um, I can do all sorts of things, send it to as a private message. I could add it to my feed and to my story. I can do all sorts of things and tag people and check in and blah, 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 right? And so that's really, um, it's that simple. You just connect your Facebook to this. Um, I'm going to... Um, going to stop my share when I do that. Um, but anyway, so, um, and then you can also get the URL. So if you want to post this to Twitter, I would say, just click on the get bit.ly URL. You can copy this and you can tweet it out. Um, you do want to make sure I always tell everyone when you are creating the landing page, um, you want to click on the little menu here, this image here and the metadata, this is the image that will um, show up in social media when you share it. So just like when I was here on this page here, this image here, or this image, um, that's what's going to be shown. It's coming, it's being pulled from, whoops, where am I here? From here, from this image. So you want to make sure that this image and your title and your description are, you know, you, you write those out properly. So you don't want to just put like uh, blah, 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 or whatever in there, right? So you want to make sure that you, um, you do put this in properly. Um, you write in a proper title and a proper description and then use the appropriate image. Okay. So that's really important. I wanted to point that out to everyone um, because that's what gets posted. Um, These social. are great guys. Mm -hmm. Take into consideration. I've seen people do posts on social platforms and what happens is they keep the link in there. Guys, you don't need to keep the link in there. Places like Facebook and LinkedIn. Once you create that link, right? And then you say, click the uh, space tab. It'll yeah. then show that image underneath. That link that's above, you can remove it. That link, that image and information will stay with the click through. So if you're gonna do it, make sure you don't put a picture there because people will click on a picture thinking it's a push through to somewhere else. I love the way you yeah. guys have formatted this. So it, so it does yeah. do that and it pulls the necessary information into the page it's supposed to go to. Yes. And there was a question is um, from Nina, can you, you know, can you change the image? Yes, you absolutely can. So you can change it to whatever it is that you want. And then that will, that will be updated. Um, it does take a few minutes to propagate to update on the Facebook side. So I would say like before, you know, you want to make sure you look at this part. Um, if you, you know, go back to your Facebook refresh and you don't see it, give it a few minutes. Um, Facebook sometimes does take a, a minute or two to, to um, pull that new um, image in. Perfect. But yeah, there's lots well, of tricks and trades to this. Lots. Yeah, there are. And that's why our support is available 24 seven. You know, it's our job to know all of that and not your job to know all of those things like right off the bat. So um, and that's something that we really pride ourselves in that you can call us, you can email us and we're, we're there for you. Um, and I know we're running short on time. Um, Jeff, I know you you're having an event September 15th in yeah. Buffalo. We are. It's an, a wonderful event. So the name of the conference is called High Tech, High Touch. The short version, we call it HT Squared. Mm -hmm. High Tech, High Touch. Kind of yeah. cute, right? Yeah. So the idea behind it is really simple. So imagine, right, a ton of mentors, national people who are national practitioners, who are actually are coming to your city to teach you about how to increase and improve your business. So fellow practitioners helping fellow practitioners. That was important. I was so tired of have, being at a conference where someone who had been in the had never been in the business or out of the business for so long was up on a stage, talking about a book they wrote or talk about what they used to do or any of that stuff. Look at, I've got some wonderful friends that are, who are amazing and they've written books. They've done other things, but to me it was important to be in a position where you've got everyday practitioners sitting down with you and talking and it's not talking from the stage about look at this is what you should be do 
They're saying they're talking about what they do and how it works and what they do to make it work. And then when they get off the stage, crazy concept. They go, they're able to sit down and talk with you about walking through the things that can make it that can make it easier for you. Uh, Sarah, you want to if you could share the page, I'd love to show people what what the website looks like and show them around a little bit to give them an idea of what it's about. Oh, okay. sure. Um, she posted it on here. Um, so it's um, H2, ht2.fun. Right. Um, so if you guys, squared. Oops. squared. Right. Tap, high touch. Yeah. Okay. It's a relationship centric, okay, tech infused and mentor powered one day sales conference. Yeah. It's fellow, it's present day practitioners helping aspiring practitioners. Real simple. Yeah. And I know my friend um, Bill Risser is going to be there with you. So I'm um, um, you're, 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 hang, you're hanging out with. Yes, I love Bill. We've got a lot of mentors on the page, folks. You can see the information about what the event's about. You can see the agenda we have and the mentors who are involved. And it's a great opportunity for you to learn from actual present day practitioners. But not only learn, but be able to sit down and talk with them about what you can do different or better about your business. It's just... Yeah. It, it's something that I think is a long time coming. And yeah. after spending the last decade speaking all over the country at a bunch of major events, it to me is an opportunity to finally give back because this is someone, I mean, I've been in this business 30 years, right? And in 30 years, I've been in everything from the title to the sales, to the finance, to the, to the legal side and over 15,000 transactions, $5 billion in business. I've got really smart people at this conference who are smarter than me. And, sit, and they're able to mentor people about how to improve their life. And I think you can't ask for something better than that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, I, I'm sad that I'm not going to be there with you guys. I'm going to be, I think I'm hanging out with, um, well, I'm going to be in te at Texas Realtors that week, um, that awesome. weekend. And then after that, I'm flying over to Ohio Realtors. So I'll be with you guys in Ohio. And then right after that, I'm going to be hanging out with Nick and um, in Chicago and my um, my friend Marky. And so we're going to be, um, hey, Hey, David from Austin. Hey, I'm, I'm going to be in Fort Worth, but I do love Austin as well. And so, we, um, we yeah. We have our mobile conference where it's a, we're able to go anywhere, anywhere in the country. Because yeah. we basically work with practitioners in that area. And after all the years of, of speaking, you get to meet a lot of people because of networking and building relationships. Exactly, exactly. Well, Jeff, it was great having you on. Thanks so much for sharing um, all, of, all of the um, ships that you're, you're building and we're building together. We're proud to be sponsoring your event um, next, uh, next week. And so we wish you all the best. And, um, oh, thanks, Nick. And so I'm going to see you guys on October 5th. Um, back here on the webinar at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time um, with my friend Joseph from Productive. We're going to be talking about phone calls and um, how to call people. So, and if I'm out on the road, if you guys are going to be at Fort Worth for Texas Realtors or Ohio Realtors, I'll be there. Um, we're also going to be in Chicago. If you guys are coming to the Chicago Realtors event, um, I'm going to, to the gala. I'm super excited um, that I'm going to the gala and grateful for my friend Marky for inviting me to that. Um, and then, yeah, then I'll be back here on October 5th. So um, hope to see you guys um, somewhere around town. All and right. if there are people who want us to come out to their area or we, because we get hired by a lot of the associations, yeah. reach out to us, folks. We, yes. we are going to any place in this country who are looking for help. Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks so much. All Thank right. Thanks, so everyone. Much. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Take Be care. Well. Bye. You too.